Good morning, everyone. It is 6.15 a.m., 59 degrees in the garage. Not too chilly, so just a beanie and short sleeves will suffice for now. On the menu today, we have chest and triceps. We're still in the first week of the new meso cycle, so we're taking all sets to three reps in reserve. Main lift of the day is flat bench dumbbell press. And in between sets today, I wanna to talk a little bit about exercise selection, variation, and frequency. So that'll be the main thing that we discuss today. But we're still getting warmed up, gonna finish the warm up and then hop into the main sets. All right, so that was my final warm-up set, 50-pound dumbbells. Gonna go for the 65s next. Now, this is a new move that I'm trying out for the first time in a long time. Historically, I've had issues with pressing movements with my right shoulder, specifically bench press. And I've given it a fair shot at bench press for years and years. Issue could have been trying to push too much weight too fast, but it always seemed to be a move that does target my chest well, but causes shoulder pain. And then eventually I have to lay off the move, you know, put chest training on the back burner. So it's been a net negative many times in my training programs. It took a lot of time for me to say, you know what, maybe flat bench just isn't for me. Based on, you know, my anthropometry and my anatomy, it's a move that just doesn't agree with me. If bench press feels great for you, stick with it. But there's a simple checklist that you could use to see if a move probably should be or probably shouldn't be in your program or whether it's worth giving it a shot. Do you have any joint pain? Is it low, medium, or high? Are you getting a good pump from the move? Is it low, medium, or high? And how sore do you get from the movement? Based on those three things, you should be able to kind of figure out, is this move for me or not? All right, I'm about to jump into the main set. I did 65 pound dumbbells on low incline earlier this week. This move's feeling good, not getting any pain from it, so I'm gonna try 65 pound dumbbells for this move. Even though it's a newer move, I feel like if I can handle on incline, I could probably handle it on this, and I'm gonna shoot for about 10 reps. Beanie had to come off after that one. <laughs> Solid set. Got a nice 10 right there. I, I had a feeling even though it's a newer move, I could probably get 10 with three reps in reserve, which it just started slowing down on that last rep, so that was a good call. This actually replaced push-ups in my program. I was doing deficit push-ups two hands on the dumbbells, getting a real deep stretch at the bottom. It just got to the point where I was doing over sets of 20, which can still be hypertrophic, but they're just more time consuming. And I just felt like I wanted to switch it up. So I still have weighted push-ups, weighted deficit push-ups in my routine, but the body weight deficit push-ups, I felt like I could pick a better move to start focusing on. That's why I chose flat dumbbell press, something new, and it's also easier to overload. So 
That's why I chose this move. We're gonna rest up a little bit, get another set. Oh yeah. I probably could have taken a little bit of time to recover a, a little extra in between those sets. Uh, only got eight right there. Still happy with it. The goal will be to just add reps to this movement over the course of the meso cycle. Hopefully get into that 12 plus range. Next move. We got weighted dips. So we're gonna set up the dip bar and get into that. Let's get it. All right, we're getting warmed up for dips. Pretty warm already from those first two sets. Just like to do the movement with a body weight first. That way, you know, just sort of get that movement pattern ingrained real quick before we move into the top set. But I just wanted to mention, after doing the dumbbell presses, Go through your checklist. Joint pain, low or none, low, medium or high joint pain. You know, I checked none. No joint pain. How was the pump? Low, moderate, amazing. I feel like I got an amazing pump out of that. Check that box off, amazing pump. So no pain, amazing pump. How sore did my chest get from the last uh, session that we did? That's, that's good, it, at least it's not spilling over into this session. So the workout that I did on Monday is not spilling over into Thursday. It was still a little sore last night, but I got a good eight hours of sleep in last night. So healed just on time, ready to go, fresh today. So we're off to a great start for chest training this meso cycle. All right, gonna finish this warm up and then get into the top working sets with weighted dips. challenging than I would have liked it to be. I'm not sure if that was three reps in reserve. I might have to drop a weight on that move. Weighted dips is a move that I'm carrying over from the last meso cycle. But it was my main lift. And I would start with weighted dips and then do deficit push-ups after that. The reason why I wanted to switch it up a little bit and put weighted dips second in the workout is because I felt like I would get a better stimulus directly in the chest from doing flat dumbbell presses with a deep stretch at the bottom. Even though I do get a really good stretch with this movement as well, I feel like this move is maybe 50-50 chest and triceps as where the dumbbell press feels more like 70-30. Because I'm prioritizing upper chest and upper back thickness, this meso cycle, that's my main focus. I wanted to put the move that I thought would get, yield the best results for that first. Now one thing about the dips is I've been using the chain to sort of pivot forward. So that I'm kind of leaning forward, and if you look at the arm movement, it's almost like doing 
a decline press when you're leaning forward. The more upright you are, the more triceps you're gonna get. If you look, that's more like a tricep extension. And I'm trying to lean forward, and I finish with the triceps, but right here I'm getting a good stretch on the pecs and the front delts at the bottom. Again, that's why I feel like it's more of a 50-50 move. Because I'm putting it second in the routine now, I might drop the weight and just go with either just the vest or just the chain because I'd like to get more than 10 reps for sure, even with RIR3. So we're gonna rest for a second, figure out the weight, and then do that. Much better. Seven on that one. Definitely made the right call to drop the weight. Gonna have to reassess this move. Try to figure out the best approach. This might be where I have to ask myself, should I have gotten rid of the deficit push-ups? <laughs> or is this a move that I should maybe do, be doing with just body weight? You know, if I was doing just body weight, I probably could have got a set of 12, maybe maybe more, with three reps in reserve. So, might switch up to just body weight dips. That actually seems like it could be a better transition. I might actually need to replace the weighted dips with body weight dips. Well, anyways, only two sets for that today. I'm happy with that for now. Just gathering data in order to make the uh, proper adjustments to get the best results. So, all right, we're moving on. I think we got some tr cable tricep press downs. So, we're going to set that up and get to it. All right, so for triceps today, we're doing some cable press downs. A move that I'm keeping from the last meso cycle, but I'm making a small variation to. Was doing rope press downs, and I was doing high reps, like 15 to 20 rep range. Staying in that rep range, I was able to progress the weight. Started getting some elbow pain towards the end of the meso cycle. So I really like the rope extension. What I did was I switched around and went overhead with lighter weight. It's been feeling great, getting a better stretch on this tricep belly right here. I like press downs and I'm limited in what I can choose for triceps here. Skull crushers always give me elbow pain. I really like the cable. So I'm just switching out the rope for this bar and I'm gonna see if I can kind of pick up where I left off last meso cycle still get high reps without any elbow pain. That's the goal, so we'll mess around with this and uh, try to find three reps in reserve with 52 and a half pounds. Once I get over that 12, 15 rep range, I ask myself, can I get 20? And if I feel like the answer is yes, I shoot for 17. And that's how I find out where three reps in reserve is. 
So we'll go ahead and log that. I love the higher rep range with this move. So I'm gonna stick with this weight, at least for the next you know, few sessions and see if we eventually get to uh, 20 or more reps with zero reps in reserve, which at that time I would add weight to the stack and then, you know, drop the reps, do it again. All right, gonna rest up and get another one of these. While I'm resting, uh, I feel like I got a pretty nice pump today. Ate a lot of rice last night, so I'm carb loaded up. Kinda wanna check out the triceps with the garage lighting. Very nice. Chest bump. Not bad. Is that belly? My posing sucks. I'm actually trying to work on it. That's not bad. I love a chest and tricep pump. That blues guitar is hitting today. One ninety two and a half this morning. I was bummed out because I got down to like one ninety one and a half, and then I took my girl on a spa day for her birthday. And uh, it's like a Asian bathhouse type spa. And they had sushi, so I was eating soy sauce. I was drinking soju and rice wine and sake. And came back the next day and I was 196 and a half pounds after dieting for like 10 weeks to lose 22 pounds. To gain back five in 24 hours was pretty depressing. But I think it was a lot of water weight and water retention, because now I'm right back down to 192-ish and a half range, which is sort of where I finished up my diet at before I started maintenance cows. We'll talk more about dieting and nutrition in another video. I wanna stick with uh, exercise selection today. But yeah, pretty good pump going on right now. liking it. Let's get another set. Oh yeah, steep, steep drop off in the reps um, on that set. Usually when it's that steep of a drop off, it either means I didn't rest long enough, probably flexing my triceps at 100% as hard as I could in between sets isn't really the best rest. <laughs> but um, that's usually the first thing that it means. But uh, it could also just mean that the move's really taxing on my triceps because I'm not used to it yet, which is good because now next, next workout, I could try to match the same sets on the first rep and then beat my sets on the second rep. So that's pretty cool. Digging the pump it's given, feel good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that into my RP Hypertrophy app. Uh, joint pain, none. That's a big win. Pump, amazing. Double big win. 
How sore did my triceps get last session? Just healed on time. So I'm, I'm loving the way we're starting off this, uh, this mess up cycle as far as push day is concerned. So let's keep the ball rolling, move on to the next move. All right, final move today. We got lateral raises with a pause at the top. And we busted out the loadable dumbbells with the micro plates. Shooting for high reps. I was doing 10 pound dumbbells last meso cycle. I bumped it up to 12 pound, 12 and a half pound. We're shooting for, I think I got like 20 as my best set last meso cycle with the pause with 10 pounds. So I'm going for around, or it was maybe a little over 20. So I'm going for like 18 today. Let's get it. That's 10, eight more. That's it right there, baby. I love it. Gotta take the beanie back off. I got dizzy on that one. The 12 pound dumbbells. I don't know if it was the set or that blues guitar solo. But man, I'm feeling something right now. Woo! Nasty. Okay, so the reason why I chose this one, there's only a few moves that I could do to hit side delts that don't cause me any shoulder aggravation. I have a history of shoulder problems as I stated earlier. Lateral raises, checks all the boxes. No joint pain, amazing pump. High stimulus to fatigue ratio. This is going to be a staple for my shoulder training, probably for life. This or some variation. So on my first uh, chest and tricep day where I finished with shoulders, I did lateral raises. I go a little heavier on that day, but I don't pause at the top. Then I heal up just in time to do this. I can lighten the load, get just as good of a pump, if not better, <sighs> less wear and tear because it's less weight. That's why I choose this move. People can laugh all they want about the micro plates, but the joke's on them. Because while they're just swinging around heavy dumbbells and getting little to no side delt activation, wondering why, um, they're just getting crunchy shoulders and, uh, they're, and their delts aren't growing. You know, I'm getting capped up on a Thursday with 12 pounds. So, you know, the joke's on them. All right. We get two more sets of these, and then I want to check the side belt pump, and we should be done for the day. I forgot the pause.
dude. Capped up. I better be careful. They're gonna start calling me a fake nanny with these caps. 12 pound dumbbells, baby, that's all you need. Did they work? Why do I not know how to flex that weird delt? I don't know why. Yeah, it's working. Somebody's staring at me right now. I have to wait till they leave. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. That's pretty much it for today. Got a solid pump. Really happy with that. Um, yeah, so pretty much as far as exercise selection, frequency, variation goes, you want to just make sure you're hitting every muscle group at least twice a week, but giving yourself enough time to recover. So you're going to want to choose moves that have a high stimulus to fatigue ratio that allow you to do that. Make sure you're going through your checklist when you're choosing an exercise. Does this move cause joint pain? Yes. Probably don't pick that move. No, might be worth exploring. Am I getting a good pump off this move? Nah, not really feeling it that much and it's causing joint pain. Ditch the move. Yeah, I'm getting amazing pump, but it's causing some joint pain, not too bad. Maybe it's worth exploring. No joint pain, amazing pump, that's a no brainer. Go ahead, put that one in and get everything you can out of it until it gets stale. One last note, I wanna say switching up exercises. I know there's some people that they get good results by doing something different or you don't want to get bored in the gym so you're constantly trying to do something new. Me personally, I would say stick with a move for a while that feels good because first of all, you're going to get strong in that move in the beginning because your body's learning how to do the move. So because of neuroadaptation, a move that feels really difficult that you're not used to doing, you might progress in very quickly. After you get those initial you know, weight increases or rep increases on that move, that's when you can really hone in and sort of lock in on a move and get the most out of it. I like to find a move and stick with it for a while. And there's some moves that I'm probably gonna stick with for my entire life, like lateral raises, and maybe make small adjustments. But I would say give a move a fair shot before you're so quick to ditch it, and maybe don't switch up the exercise is too often. Give it a meso cycle. If, you, if it doesn't feel good after a meso cycle, ditch it. If it feels good for that meso cycle, maybe give it another one and even another one after that until you really just get everything you can out of it or it's just stale or you're not progressing in the move anymore. Then you could switch out for something that kind of checks all those same boxes but is slightly different and they get the most out of that move for a while. I think that's the best way to keep progressing and keep making gains. All right guys, that's it. If you wanna follow along this meso cycle with me, I leave all the workout programs uh, or, or all the exercises in the description. So you can just do exactly what I'm doing if you want. Switch out a move here and there that you don't like. It's all good, just offering it up there. But go ahead and subscribe, uh, like the video. And I'll be posting these pretty much every day. So you can just go ahead and follow along with me for the next five, six weeks. And we can make these blue collar gains together. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Peace.